Well, hello, Xenographers everywhere, and welcome to another episode. I seem to have used an awful lot of vintage 50mm lenses over the past year. Some good, some bad, and some decidedly indifferent. So this week, I'm going to share with you my five top picks for 50mm vintage lenses. Some are quite fancy and well-known, others are more modest, but they all have a distinctive visual character and they'll all make some fantastic images. So buckle up and hold on tight as we check out my five top picks for 50mm vintage lenses. While most of these lenses are from major manufacturers, the lens in the number 5 spot isn't. It's the relatively humble 50mm f1.9 from Chinon, a lens that surprised me a lot with the quality of its images. This is a real bargain basement lens, but despite that, it's one that really comes up with the goods. The first thing that struck me is how sharp it is, far sharper than I'd expected such a cheap lens to be, and quite a bit sharper than some much more expensive and much better known lenses. It's very much a wolf in sheep's clothing. If the detail's there, this lens will resolve it. It's got strong contrast too, and it makes strong and punchy images in both colour and black and white. Colours are rendered nicely in what you might call a naturalistic way, a little on the cool side, not oversaturated, but with good body and depth, and certainly not weak or washed out. Black and white images are clean and clear with strong whites, blacks and greys, and a very good tonal range. This lens makes some very nice background blur. At the minimum focus distance of 45 centimeters, blur is smooth and soft and gentle. Pull back a little, and while for the most part it stays smooth, like many vintage lenses, there's a point where things become a bit busy and nervous. But it's not persistent, and it's easy to shoot around. Point light sources behind the subject create a beautiful field of bubbles and I think there's a hint of swell from this lens, although others give more so it might not be perfect for fans of the swirly stuff. It's a very well made lens too, it's all metal and it seems to have stood the test of time pretty well. Focus and aperture rings move freely and it feels pretty much as it must have done when it was new. The Pentax K mount means it can be used with a wide variety of film SLRs and it very easily adapts to mirrorless too. These lenses are not expensive and you can find a good example for around £20 or so. A great little lens and a worthy winner of my number 5 spot. At number 4 we have the Carl Zeiss Jenner Biotar. This is one of those iconic lenses that the internet raves about and it seems to feature on most internet lists of the best vintage lenses. However, when I first used this one I have to admit I was somewhat underwhelmed. Colours were a bit washed out, sharpness was lacking and it left me feeling a little disappointed. It took me a while to realise that the lens had fungus of a very fine kind that's not easy to see and after stripping and cleaning it, this lens is transformed. Colour rendition from the newly cleaned lens is now nothing short of delightful. Colours are delicate, subtle and beautiful and slightly, but not too much, shifted towards the cooler end, which personally I like very much. They seem just a little oversaturated too, which gives images plenty of pop and punch. It makes strong black and white images as well with, thanks to a good clean, strong contrast and a good tonal range. If you like a bit of the swirly stuff, well, you'll probably like this one. This lens is the original archetypal swirl machine 
and with the right background at the right distances, it'll give you swirl by the bucketful. At other distances, blur is more conventional, soft and large if you're shooting close, diminishing with distance. There is a point where it turns a little bit nervous, but the overall character of this lens is so nice that I think it deserves a pass for that, and in any case, it's easy to shoot around. Cleaning the lens massively improved sharpness too, and while it's still not the sharpest lens in the world, it's now not obviously soft, and I think it's entirely sharp enough. And the overall aesthetic feel of the lens and its wonderful colour balance means outright sharpness isn't quite so important. A good example of this lens will cost around £100, depending on the version, and I think it's well worth it. Just make sure you get a clean one. In third place is the 1950 Leica Sommitar f 250 mm a rangefinder lens that's beautifully made and brings a touch of magic to a shot. One of the things that impressed me most about this little lens is the way it handles colour. It's shifted slightly towards the warmer end of things and even though I usually prefer a slightly cooler look, I do like the colours from this one. Colours are full and strong with plenty of depth and body, they're substantial without being oversaturated and colour images in general are very pleasing indeed. Black and white images are nice too and the lens has strong contrast, although that does fall off quite quickly if the sun's in the frame. I was very surprised by how sharp this lens is and the amount of fine detail it can resolve. It really is quite something. And when you consider that the design dates from the late 40s and probably owes something to the F2 summer of the 1930s, its sharpness is all the more surprising. Background blur is for the most part soft and lovely, although its minimum focus distance of one meter means it won't make the massive sort of blur that closer focusing lenses will. This lens will give you some swirl too as out of focus elements collide with and leach into each other. Point light sources seem to sparkle, creating what for me is a rather magical effect. A lovely little lens, exquisitely made, with a unique and magical aesthetic signature. A good one will cost between £200 and £250. Not the cheapest vintage lens, but not the most expensive either. And, in my opinion, this one is well worth it. At number two is another Carl Zeiss Jenner lens, this time it's the Pancola 50mm f1.8. This lens is a real stunner. All the hype you may have read, and there's plenty of it online, is true. Of all the lenses I've reviewed, this is the one that surprised me the most. It's one of the sharpest vintage lenses I've used and it even beats some modern lenses for sharpness. Every detail that's in focus is in razor sharp focus and there's really not much that escapes it. Quite stunning. It's got fantastic colour reproduction too. Colours are punchy, big and bold. There are no half measures here. Saturation is on the high side, which personally I rather like. There are no weak or washed out colours here. Everything's pushed up a bit to give a slightly magical version of reality. Strong contrast means it makes great black and white too, full of depth and tonal richness. And while contrast does drop off if the sun's in the frame, it doesn't drop by too much, a testament to the quality of this lens's coatings. Background blur characteristics are not too dissimilar to the earlier Biotar, in that this lens is another swirler, but the swirl, I think, is rather less pronounced, rather more delicate than the earlier lens. Of course, swirl only happens with specific distances. Most of the time, this lens gives 
clouds of sweet and soft blur that's emphasised by its very useful close focus distance of 30 centimetres. Like the biotar, it has a busy spot, but it's less pronounced and easier to shoot around. A really stunning little lens that'll cost around £100 for a good one. Not the cheapest vintage lens, but in this case, it really is money well spent. And finally, my pick for the number one spot for 50mm lenses I've used this year goes to the Canon FD f1.4. This lens is a stunner. It performs consistently well in all areas and it has no real weaknesses to speak of except perhaps the plastic used for some of its construction although that has an upside when it comes to price. FD lenses are often about a third less expensive than equivalent lenses from other major manufacturers. This lens is sharp across the entire aperture range, even wide open at f1.4, resolving power is very high, higher than the Pentax Super Tacomar f1.4, higher than the Zuiko 1.4, the Chinon 1.4 and even the Minolta 1.4. You can shoot this lens at any aperture and be sure of getting a good sharp shot. Colour rendition is fantastic, strong and bold and saturated, vibrant with loads of body and depth. It makes black and whites with strong blacks, whites and shades of grey. Everything is clear, clean and confident, with nothing pale or washed out and no half measures. Background blur is beautiful, big and soft and lovely up close, falling off with distance of course, but always delicate and gentle, with, as far as I can see, no nervous or busy spot. This one is smooth all the way. And it makes the best flares and the best sun stars of any of my vintage lenses, bar none. This lens is outstanding and yet it's not particularly expensive. Good copies can be found for between 50 to 70 pounds, which for a lens this good makes it one of the best bargains of the vintage lens world. So there we are, my five top picks of the many vintage 50mm lenses I've used over the past year. Of course, there are many others that I haven't used, but of the ones that have come my way, these are the ones I've liked the best, and I can recommend all of them. So that's it from me for now. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell before you go. And if you like this channel and you want to support it, you can do so on patreon.com forward slash xenography. As ever, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time for some more Xenography.